Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store and today we're talking about the Fujifilm XE4. A little while ago, we had our hands very briefly on a pre-production XC4, but we really didn't get much time to really do much more than a hands-on video with it. But now we have this camera for a much more extended period of time, and you can really put it through its paces. Right off the bat, I want to say how good looking these cameras are. Fuji does a great job with their cameras, and this is no exception. This is the silver version. It is available in black as well, but the silver has this great sort of classic look to it. And it takes a lot of styling cues from the very popular X100V. In fact, some people almost say that this is just an X100V with interchangeable lenses. Now, I'm not sure if I quite agree with that 100%, but I do like how this camera is styled. Ergonomically, though, I do wish this camera had a bit of a grip and a thumb rest. Now you can get those, those are available options and it really makes the camera feel and handle much better. Right now today I'm finding myself having to hold the camera a little tighter than I'd like and I really wish it had something a little more secure and confident to hang on to. Now the dials on the top are pretty well implemented. We do have our shutter speed dial here that takes us into full aperture or program if we want as well. The on off switch is nice and they still have that super cool screw on uh, bulb release if you want to do old school bulb releases with an actual case. Cable. It's kind of cool that they've implemented that. There is an exposure compensation dial up to the top right here. And I do find that it's nice and looks good, but it's a little bit loose for my taste. I find that I'm easily bumping it and I have to be conscientious of that, make sure I don't set that and wonder why my exposure is too bright or too dark all of a sudden. It is a pretty minimalistic back on this camera though, with a few buttons and like the play auto exposure lock, drive button doubles as a delete button, but we do have the little eight-way controller and I use that all the time. I do like that it has an articulating screen. It doesn't articulate off to the side like I prefer, but I like a little bit of articulation is better than nothing. It is nice and sleek with this camera when you pop it up. It's nice to do waist level shooting like this and it does flip out and over much like the A6400 from Sony that allows you to do some selfies and vlogging if you so desire. So walking around Black Diamond in this quaint little town, it's quite funny with a bunch of eclectic shops. This is which is closed today. Oh, hey, that's an Evelyn. Oh, hey. <laughs> how are you? Good. Hey, Ivy, how are you? Yeah, we're just, uh, oh, we're heading to gonna get first milkshake. I have some bad news for you. What? It's Wednesday and it's closed. What? Well Dave, since we happen to run into each other in this small town, um, why don't we talk a little bit about why I think the A6400 is actually a better choice as an entry-level camera for family photography. Because it's not nearly as sexy as the X-C4. Look at this camera. This is the most stylish looking camera. It blows yours out of the water. Sexiness isn't always <laughs> everything, Dave. A lot of it has to do with the feel of the camera. Fair and this enough. one definitely feels better in your hand, especially right out of the box. You have to get some additional accessories in order to kind of, you know, rig it out to make it feel good and you're not gonna drop it. I will certainly give it to Sony on that. It is a much better feeling camera out of the box. Yes, and the battery is also a little juicier. You get a few more shots out of this guy too. You certainly do. Now, one thing that surprises me about this compared to these two cameras is the video side of things. Fuji actually is a better video camera between these two cameras and Sony's the video company. Yeah, it's true. And that's one area that really surprises me. I mean, this camera doesn't even have a headphone jack to monitor audio of like crazy baby sounds. <laughs> now with this XE4, you do need to plug in the dongle that comes supplied with the camera to a 3.5 jack. What does allow you to monitor audio, which is crucial when you're shooting video. Now, one area where I think is the biggest game changer is with autofocus performance. The autofocus performance on the A6400 is phenomenal and it has real time tracking autofocus and I think Sony still has the beat by a long shot. I won't say a long shot. The Fuji certainly focuses quite nice, right? It does have face and eye detection and it works quite well. But yes, I will give Sony a bit of an edge when it comes to the autofocus. The real-time autofocus tracking is something you really need to see to feel how it works. Yeah. I mean, with image performance, I'd say they're pretty close. I personally like the quality of the JPEGs actually out of the Fuji camera. The other thing we should talk about is rolling shutter. I think your camera does a better job of handling rolling shutter, where the A6400, that is one major issue that comes up when shooting video. Yeah, you're gonna notice that if you're shooting kids running, for instance, and things like that, when there's some fast action, yeah. uh, that's what's gonna play. Well, Ivy's very disappointed that we didn't get a milkshake today. At I'm shot. disappointed as well. Yeah, so we're going to carry on, but you enjoy shooting your camera. I think it's a really good choice.
The Fuji X-Trans sensor has been their bread and butter technology for a long time. This camera features a 26 megapixel sensor, the same one that's found in the X100V. So we're getting great results out of it. Now, I love the X-Trans technology. The X-Trans sensors differ from the standard Bayer pattern sensors we see in so many other cameras. And what you find is that the digital noise or the out-of-focus areas have a much more organic feel to it, much more film kind of look to it than you get with other sensors. And I think that's why I really like using Fuji cameras in their film simulation modes. Now, I don't look at the X-E4 as a sport-specific style of camera, but it is capable of some okay frame rates. You can do 8 frames a second in mechanical shutter, and if you switch into electronic, you can do 20 frames or 30 frames per second. Now keep in mind, at 30 frames per second, you're going to get about 1 second of shutter actuations before it taps out. And in 20 frames a second, you're just shy of 80 frames before the buffer fills up and you got to wait. So we've had a lot of fun walking around Black Diamond today and getting to know a few of the characters in the different shops, which is always a lot of fun in a small town. But it really gives me an idea of what this camera is kind of capable of. Now with Fuji, we do have a full selection lenses including things like the one to 400 if you want to shoot wildlife or something big and long but honestly those lenses just don't feel comfortable on this camera for me this camera lives with like a 23 millimeter lens on here one of the smaller primes 23 is a 35 millimeter equivalent in a full frame which happens to be my favorite focal length and that's where I find these cameras come into their own when you're using smaller primes and a walk around kind of a family camera sort of an everyday camera so if you're on a vacation or a trip or just need some decent quality video great quality stills this this is going to be a fantastic little camera to play with. Now it comes into the market in a really crowded area. You've got the 6400 that Evelyn was talking about earlier and even Fuji's own XS10 competes with it. The price isn't that much different and with the XS10 you get a viewfinder that's dead in the center. Now this viewfinder is not bad at all. It's 2.36 million dots of resolution which works out quite nicely but I find myself the viewfinders that are off to the side of the camera I prefer them in the middle. I'm a left eye shooter which is also a bit of a problem because when I hold up this camera to my eye I'm effectively blind to anything else around me. So I do prefer the viewfinders dead center. It's a personal choice. The XS10 also gives you the proper articulating screen or the fully articulating screen depending how you want to call it but it's just a little bit more expensive. So I think it's well worth taking a look at and see if this is going to work into your kind of lifestyle and workflow. But in my opinion, I like keeping the camera nice and small with the smaller compact primes. I fell in love with this 23mm years ago and it's been one of my go-to lenses. The 23mm is the equivalent of a 35mm which happens to be my favorite focal length. We're going to wrap it up here in Black Diamond and head back to Calgary, but I of course want to know what you guys think of the Fujifilm X-E4. Is its good looks and list of specifications a compelling option for you as a camera? Or are you going to look for a different model within the Fuji lineup or a different brand altogether? Let us know in the comments down below. Please follow us on Instagram and hit that notification bell and subscribe. We'll catch you again next time. It is a fantastic looking camera compared to this black thing you've got going on. You know, it doesn't look as nice, but this feels a lot better in the end. <laughs> it has um, a beefier grip. It's easy to hold on. <laughs>